in chapter 9, we are going to go much, much deeper into textual criticism. You probably have noticed that most of the sections in this book have two chapters, but this section has three chapters because I really have to deal with the work of Professor Bart Ehrman to really help you understand what's going on in the modern debate. He is a very powerful writer. His books sell hundreds and hundreds of thousands. He's a very powerful debater and he's very influential. And there's a really good chance that when your freshman student comes home from school with all kinds of questions about the Bible, his or her questions have been phrased by Professor Ehrman. So this chapter is really viewing him as the poster child of the text critical debate. And I have to go into quite a bit of detail to help you really understand what he's saying. So what would you do if your child came home from university and said, there are more errors in the manuscripts than there are words. How can you possibly trust the Bible? Well, at one level it's true. I mean, we have 5,600 Greek manuscripts and depending upon how you count, and that's a little tricky, we probably have 400,000 variants, alternate forms of words in these manuscripts. Well, if you have the New Testament with 400,000 differences, how can you trust it? Well, it depends upon the significance of those variants. True, there are some words that have four, five, ten different forms, and we have to decide which ones are original. And yet there are many, many words that are exactly the same in all the Greek manuscripts. So the real issue is, what's the significance of those uh, variants? It's turning to manuscripts. Uh, Bart Ehrman is famous for his line, we don't have copies of copies of copies of copies of manuscripts. These manuscripts have been copied so many times and so many errors have been introduced that we can't trust the ones that we have. Well, what would you say? Well, it's based on the assumption that about every 20 years or so that a manuscript is worn out and has to be recopied. We have no idea how many copies of copies there are and he is just making up numbers to, con to uh, convince his point. We just don't know how many copies there are between, let's say, an eight, a manuscript from the 800s and the time that Jesus actually said it. What would you say if your child came home from the university and said, well, you know, mom and dad, the earliest scribes were untrained and they were sloppy. They introduced all these mistakes into the manuscripts were then just repeated through all the other manuscripts. So you can't trust any of them. Well, it is true that the early scribes were not trained in the sense of trained calligraphers. They weren't trying to produce works of art. But there's every indication that they were very, very careful at what they did. And while the penmanship may not have been the best in the ancient world, is every indication that they were very, very careful in what they were doing. And in what is one of the strangest charges is that he suggests that there were a lot of changes to the manuscripts before the manuscripts that we actually have. And I remember first reading that and scratching my head and say, well, how can you know that there were changes in the manuscripts before any manuscript that we have? And of course, the answer is he can't. It's complete and total guesswork. He likes to raise the question, well, maybe the story of the woman caught in adultery was added in the second century before we have any manuscripts of that passage in John. It's complete and total guesswork and it's powerful rhetorically when addressing a group of students, but that doesn't make it right. I conclude the chapter by going through some of the primary passages that he refers to in his YouTube videos and discuss how his conclusions are not the only necessary conclusion. The technical chapter, but if you, have, if you are in school or your child's in school, you will be exposed to the work of Bart Ehrman.